Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play, and today I'm delighted to introduce you to SDR Connect. This is being billed as the Mac Quick Start Guide, and uh, I will show you how to install the software on a Mac, but once we get into running the software, it's applicable to all platforms. So first up, we'll talk about installing the software, and then we'll get into actually running the software, and you can see the various aspects of the software that I'm going to describe today. This is by no means a thorough description, but it is enough to get you up and running and familiarize yourself with the main features of the software. A lot of the additional features are fairly self-explanatory if you've used SDR Uno or indeed any other SDR software package before. So without further ado, let's get started. For the purposes of this video, I put the downloaded file for SDR Connect on my desktop. If you downloaded it with Safari, there's no need to do that. You can just use the download button in Safari and double click on the uh, program there. So on a Mac, the downloaded file will be a disk image file .dmg at the end. Simply double click on it to start the installer. Accept the agreement. It will open up a window and then you can drag the application itself across to your applications folder. In my case, I'd already downloaded it so I was prompted if I wanted to replace the existing file or not. Once the installation is complete, you can drag the mounted disk image into the trash, locate SDR Connect in your applications folder, and double click it to start the program. So this is the main window of SDR Connect when you open it. The first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the device selection in the upper left. Here you see we're connected to an RSPDX and its corresponding serial number. If you have multiple RSPs connected, they will also appear in the drop-down along with any servers you have configured. So simply select the source that you want to stream and then move across to the play button in the upper left to start the stream from the device. Already we can see some sort of signal appearing, but since we're using an RSPDX and our antenna is connected to the uh, antenna B port, we need to go into the device settings and select the correct input. By default, it selects antenna A, we need antenna B. The reason I used Antenna B is because I also have a BIOS T on the uh, amplifier on my loop, so we need to turn that on also. You'll see the slider there at the bottom. Next thing, we notice that there is an overload warning showing up in the display, and when this occurs, we simply need to reduce the RF gain until the overload warning disappears. For now, that's all we need from the device settings, so we can click the gear icon again to close that window. Over on the right now, we see the various uh, modes and filter, step sizes, and so on uh, for the types of signal we want to listen to. So we're on the FM broadcast band. We want to select wide FM, 192 kilohertz filter width, and 100 uh, kilohertz step size. We're not exactly on frequency, so we need to tune. And we can tune by clicking on the upper or lower part of each of the frequency digits to put us exactly on frequency. Of course, you don't have to use the frequency digits for tuning. You can simply click on an another signal in the spectrum to tune to that, or if you have a scroll wheel capability, you can use the scroll wheel to move up and down in steps corresponding to the step size shown over there on the right. A button at the top of the screen takes you into the display settings. There are various adjustments you can make here, but of particular interest to us is the base level, which can be used to move the noise floor towards the bottom of the display, and also the reference level, which adjusts how many dBs of gain you can see uh, from top to bottom of the screen. Alternatively, in addition to using these sliders, you can actually click on the vertical axis. A left mouse click will allow you to change the reference level. Conversely, 
a right mouse click will adjust the base level. Nice quick and easy way to adjust the display to how you want it to appear. If we now move over to the upper right of the display, we will see the auxiliary spectrum. And again, like in SDR Uno, the auxiliary spectrum is an expanded view of the grey area you see either side of the red tuning marker in the main window. The width of the auxiliary spectrum is defined by the filter you have selected. So if you go back and select a different filter setting, you will immediately see the difference in the displayed uh, frequencies shown in the auxiliary spectrum window. Directly below this window are two tabs. You can also select to see an audio spectrum view. This is a new feature for SDR Connect compared to SDR Uno. So you can switch back and forth between uh, the auxiliary spectrum and the audio spectrum depending on your preference. Now once you have everything set up to your liking, you can actually remove the sidebar by using the button at the top of the screen which will give you a larger display of the RS spectrum and the waterfall. To bring it back just click that sidebar button again. Within that sidebar there are some other settings, for example there are some audio adjustment settings for AGC, uh, there are some audio settings for where you send the output from the VRX. You can send it to your speakers or perhaps to a virtual cable of some sort. Um, and we will leave you to explore those settings by yourself. They're reasonably self-explanatory. Now one of the drop downs I do want to draw your attention to is the bands. This is similar to the band framing function you are maybe familiar with from SDR Uno. You have the ham bands upper and lower and in addition you have uh, broadcast bands and uh, I'm particularly keen that we now have an FM broadcast band button because I spend a lot of time on the FM band in addition to uh, the long wave band which is mainly f of interest in Europe and medium wave or AM broadcast band. And then finally there are some other display settings and what you can do is you can determine whether or not you show just the S meter or the actual power and no signal to noise readings. You can show either one individually or you can show both. And then finally you can actually uh, swap positions on the screen for the uh, S meter and the power readings with the frequency display if you want to do that. And then the final setting is you have a choice of various different palettes for the waterfall and again you're encouraged to go ahead and experiment with that to find something that uh, you like. One area of the, the display that we haven't looked at so far is in the lower right. And down there you see the recording module. This area of the display is used for the various modules that will be introduced going down the road. And to give you a taste, we've included an audio recording module in this first uh, preview release. So for example, if you want to record the station that's tuned, simply click on the record button and it will record that station for you. Note in the future, there will be many more modules added to SDR Connect and they will appear in this part of the screen. In this video we're using an RSPDX, but if we had an RSP Duo, the diversity controls would appear in this lower right area of the screen. This will be covered in a further video later. That includes our brief introductory tour of SDR Connect. By no means did we cover all the capabilities of the software and we encourage you to experiment and, and enjoy the new features that SDR Connect brings to market. In addition to this, please be aware that there are other videos either available now or coming very soon that will cover how to set up client server networks for remote connections, how to use the RSP Duo with SDR Connect. I didn't even touch on repositioning the windows today, that is another topic that will be covered, along with using multiple VRXs. As always, there is further information available on our website. And finally, I want to stress, this is just the first public preview of SDR Connect. 
There are many more features coming very soon to add to the capabilities of SDR Connect in the future. As always, we hope you found something useful in this video and thank you very much for watching. 73s.